work obligations. And that allowed Goes to get an extra advantage to end up taking this whole thing last year. And here is the club championship for the Seattle Seahawks. And we'll start at the 30-yard line. George is going to have the ball. And real quick, Scott, the playbooks that these players are working with in this game is you got George Rock and none other than the Seattle Seahawks offensive playbook going in the Seattle club using Seattle's offensive playbook. He has the Detroit defense. K. Mike, on the other hand, rocking Cleveland's offense and the Dallas Cowboys defensive playbook. So first and 10, you can see Mike Vick in the gun. They hand it off to Leonard Fournette. He's powered up, but this time he gets powered down a gain of nothing. Yeah, and Big George, he's going to have that Mike Vick, and he's going to have that conductor ability, Scott. So that's going to allow him to make quicker hot routes at the line of scrimmage. So second and nine. They say he got a yard. I didn't see it, but hey, I'm bad at math. You guys already know that. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Just a week away from the club championship in San Francisco. We're going downtown. Tyreek Hill and knocked away at the last moment. I like the aggressiveness, RG. I don't know, though, Scott. I saw a crossing route coming wide open over the middle of the field. It looks like George got a little bit greedy. A match protect scheme, three routes. He had one of them wide open, went for the gusto instead of a big gain. It's a loss of down big third and nine here. Ball at his own 30. He's going to flip the script. That'll punch the bunch to the right of Johnson. Moss and Amari Cooper. He's got Vic. Mike Click on his D lineman. To the corner route, and there is Randy Moss. Straight cash, homie, down at the 39. And that is what happens when you start clicking around on defense. George right there catches K Mike, switching around his defensive players, catches him on his end. That means Mike can't go and lurk the field. Cooks up a hottie dotty. Big first down for George. A little bit Whoa, of motion, what and we got a fumble. Oh, my goodness. The snap hit the man in motion. Oh, that In looks... all our years, I have never seen that. That was a quick snap almost to Cooper. Well, that's the only time you see that happen, Scott, and it's terrible, is when you start messing around with motion and snapping, snapping the ball while the player's in motion near the offensive line. It's rare, but it's happened in Madden for a long time. Very unfortunate right there for George. That's not something that happens often. And there's the heat as Mike sends in Peppers. Jabril Peppers comes in on the sack. You can see him right here in your living room. Oh, hey, Mike hooks one up, and now George with a big third and 17 gets knocked out of field goal range. Scott, this is a big play, and if you're George, you don't need to just go for the first down right here. It's potentially two down territory, or at least look to get yourself in field goal range. Doesn't need all 17. Quick throw to the outside. There's Hill. You know he's got speed, and that'll probably put him in range. That'll be a 52-yarder from there. Yep, and I think he's going to take his three. He's going to get the boot out, get some points on the opening possession, and that's huge. If you receive the ball in Madden, Scott, oh, he might have missed the kick. Close. There's Elliott. Good. It took every bit of his leg to get that one through. Not the strongest kicker in the league, but that'll be enough to get it done. So on his opening drive, three points, and now it'll be K. Mike's opportunity. Fournette off his helmet, and he'll just lay down at the 31. That was a nice opening drive for Big George, a.k.a. George Douglas, 28 years old from Memphis, Tennessee. But now he has to deal with the offense of K. Mike. We've said it a bunch of times, Scott. He has never lost a game in this event. And just to give you perspective on some of the guys he's beat in club championship play over the years, it's cream of the crop type players, Scott. Kerry Q, Silent Soldier, Young Kiv, The Great True Boy, Misery, FMB Monster, the list goes on, Volterex, the list goes on and on, Scott. So he has beat an elite level competition multiple times in this event. First to 10 now at the 31. Mike's first time with the rock. The in pocket. the pocket, and what a throw. Cross midfield to the 42-yard line. Aaron Rodgers dialing it up. And that's the legend, Dallas Clark, that he slangs it to right over the middle to the tight end. A big gain in the pocket presence right there. Scott was immaculate. 
Mike picking up right where he left off in club championship play last year. We well, you know how big Dallas Clark was for Peyton Manning over those years. Take a look at it again. Dallas Clark going up and coming in with the grab. You can see we're locked in. We're locked in. I can't take my eyes off the screen. Oh, he's got room. And here's the thing, Scott, that I want to call out. K. Mike, spinning is a big part of the meta in Madden right now. A lot of people like the truck. They like the steerable spin and get nasty in the open field. K. Mike plays on a conservative ball carrier coaching adjustment, which reduces his chance at fumbles, but it doesn't allow him to try special moves like the truck or the spin. So don't expect to see him spinning in the open field because he's on that conservative ball carrier. He says he stays on it all game, Scott. Two hands for safety as right. Coleman yeah. picks up four. Two. Jerry Rice off to the left, excuse me, to the right. He's got Johnson Moss and Dallas Clark. Keeps Clark in the block. Somehow oh, no. gives it away. Oh, he throws it. A pick. Perfect Clark. timing as Rod Woodson right at the goal line pulls it in and takes it out to the four yard line. Huge turnover. Oh, and George Douglas makes a huge play. Mike tries to sneak it in the front corner of the end zone. Click on by Big George, and he makes the big play that he needed. What can he do on offense? We saw him use this play earlier. Picked up seven yards this time. Picks up 11 in a first down. That's going to be a play that Mike's going to have to respect at some point. It is wide open. Oh, man. And yeah, Mike is leaving those flats open, but a lot of Madden players will do that, Scott. They'll make you beat them with that underneath stuff, not give up the big play. The question is, is he patient enough to take it all the way up the field and then make the read when Mike does adjust to put a hard flat out there? Will he go to that second level? It's a chess game going on. Well, he gets out of the shadow of his own end zone for a moment. First and 10 at the 15. And Fortinet bumbling, stumbling, and not fumbling. To the 26-yard line with a big fella. And George told me, Scott, he almost didn't make it here. Him getting to this event, it came down to the last play in his online elimination game where he had to make a goal line stand against Astro Dots to make it here. I bet Astro Dots just jumped up in his seat a little bit. Sorry we didn't see you. George told us how tough you were. It was a big game, but he said it literally came down to that last one. So. He's just happy to be here. It's been a grind the whole way through. Well, the former LSU Tiger, Leonard Fournette, picks up nine yards there. He's averaging seven yards a carry. Three carries for 21 yards for Leonard Fournette. How about that, Scott? You got to play a guy named Astro Dots to make it. I see a name like Astro Dots. I'm getting a little nervous. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming your passing attack's hey, pretty good. Second and one now. Going to put Cooper off on the left side of the bunch. Second and one is a good time sometimes to take a shot play, Scott. Assuming you could run it on third or fourth. No, he goes conservative. Pick up the first down, and he's controlled the clock here in this opening quarter. On his first drive, went down, he got a field goal, but was able to come up with an INT with his own five and has battled his way out here to the 36-yard line. First and 10. George coming up to this line of scrimmage, Scott. One thing about George's team that was interesting to me too, Scott, is a lot of players, when you're building salary cap, there's a thing called chemistry where you want to get the sprinter chem, which gives you extra speed or the route chem. George didn't use any of those chemistries. He has players all subbed out of position. It's a very unique lineup that I didn't see a lot of other competitors make a roster with that type of style. So I didn't know if it was going to work against him, but so far, so good for him. The yeah. only the only chemistries he has, Scott, is the conductor, the playmaker on his Calvin Johnson, and the deep route specialist on Moss. No other chems on his team. And we saw a lot of powered up players being used by a, a lot of our competitors in the club championship. George didn't go as deep as he could have gone in some of those powered ups. Obviously, Michael Vick is a big part of his offense. Well, the key that you want to use the power ups for, Scott, is because you can put the chemistry onto them a lot. They are applicable to take almost any chemistry, but since George doesn't use chemistry at all, he didn't worry about the power ups much. He just went and found default players that just fit his scheme and plugged them in wherever. I believe he has a left tackle playing left guard, but it's not going to allow him to take advantage of those chemistries. But hey, whatever suits you, suits you best. There's a reason he's in that seat right now. 
has to know what he's doing. Start of the second quarter. George uses a timeout to set some audibles, and there's that play again. Tyreek Hill, and this time it's good for 13. You said it, Scott. He's just continuing to check down to that flat route, and I think Mike's going to let him do that until he gets down to the red zone because you can continue to check down to those flats, but once you get down there, it gets very stingy. The field starts to shorten up, and you're going to have to make a play. Let's see if Mike continues to give him that. Boy, just chewing up this clock here in the first half. Only a three-point deficit, though, for Mike. He's out to the 50-yard line now for Big George. And, you know, when we were talking to him, play a little semi-pro ball on the offensive line. He's a big guy. He knew he was going to come with a little bit of a running attack here. Anybody that plays offensive line, I don't care if it's JV, high school, college level, semi-pro, you know you're going to run the football. Lyman uh, loved to run the football. He loved to run the, the football. He says he was a left tackle, Scott. The way he described his game play, I'll tell you right after this play, if he checks to the flat again. The way he described his game as a football player, Scott, he says, I'm what they call a finesse lineman. I open up holes. It's about finesse and footwork. That was the quote I got from him to describe his game style. Well, my mouth was watering when he was talking about Memphis, Tennessee, and getting out there getting some hot wings. I, I asked him what his favorite meal was. He said, I love chicken. I love hot wings. If you're ever in Memphis, you got to hit all-star hot wings, Scott. So we know what we got to do yeah, in the draft. I'm okay. I would never turn down a trip to Memphis. A little smoky barbecue sauce. Fournette. He did say those all-star hot wings were the truth. And I like how they call them hot wings and not buffalo wings. You know, I spend, I spend quite a bit of time in Seattle year over year uh, doing some work and really enjoy Seattle as a town. So so progressive, so smooth. Get a little seafood, get a head down to the market. I mean, they, they got their beautiful stadium, CenturyLink Field, the home of the 12th man, the home of the Seahawks. I've been there a couple times, seen a couple games. Been the guest of Doug Baldwin a time or two. And on second oh, and open. eight, there's Moss. That's a huge play right there, Scott. That's all the way down to the 16-yard line. So it'll be first and 10 at the 16. Ed Reed had to make the touchdown-saving tackle. And I like what George is doing here, Scott. He's mixing up his formations. He goes to some gun-tight slots, some single-back deuce close, a little gun bunch. Constantly mixing up the looks. He's in the deuce close right now. Some carry Q. Certainly it made a, a strong formation over the years. Big shout out to Kerry Q. And Fournette will get a yard. So eight carries for 29 yards for Fournette, but that's keeping Mike honest. Yeah, and let's be real here. Things are about to get very important in this red zone right now. If K Mike can hold George to three, Scott, that's going to be huge for his chances to win this game. But if George can go in and get this touchdown and make it two possessions, he's really going to have Mike's back up against the ropes. This is a huge possession going on right now, Scott. K Mike has won over $32,000 in his batting career. And Big George. Remember last year, he was the Titans runner-up. Came up a bit short there in Tennessee. We mentioned he's from Memphis, and he wanted this challenge. This is where he wanted to be. He chose to be with the Seahawks. And you mentioned he pushed it in here. We could have a two-score game. Very important third and nine here for both our competitors. It's a huge play, Scott. Biggest play of the game so far. Right at the two-minute warning, ball on the 15. Vic has time, has a man, Moss. and Randy Moss. Randy Dandy Moss, Scott, gets him with the high ball, going to jump up in traffic, still hold on to the ball when you're a 97, 98 overall player. Those are the types of plays you can make, and this is why you have him on the field. That height in the red zone to that high ball is so important. If you're not throwing high balls in the red zone in Madden, I don't know what you're doing. A cover two that he laid right between the corner and the safety. And we got a 10-0 ball game here. I mean, this is huge. I mean, 
Mike's a big favorite going into this game, and for George to be up 10-0 right now, he really is doing what he said he wanted to set out to do, is prove he is one of the best in the world, and so far, so good. The big George, how is Mike gonna respond? This is just semifinal number one. We got Young Kiv and Decroft in the new school battle between the 21-year-old Kiv and the 18-year-old Decroft. Both our competitors right here, Mike and Big George, 28 years old. In Madden years, they might as well be 60. Huh. Second and nine, and Ooh. nearly picked off. The high-level stick work all around right there, Coltrane. Amazing pocket right there for Mike, but then George with a phenomenal click on to jump in front of that route and almost pick it off. Of course, Mike. Working out of Spokane, Washington, in the Air Force there. Holding down his command post, but right now he certainly needs to go to the air because he's trailing by 10. And he's in a fourth and 19 with a huge sack from Big George. And he's going to go for this. Inside. Mike's going for it. Keep in mind, he had a fourth and 22 in overtime last year when he needed to beat Young Kiv, and he was able to get it. Does he have that type of magic right now here, Scott? This is huge. 70 seconds to go on the half. Trailing by 10. Fourth down. Good pocket. Rodgers throws it up top. Going to be close. Up and hauled in. All the way down at the 16-yard line. It's a bomb for Rodgers. Ocho Cinco, Chad Johnson makes the huge play on fourth and 17. And I don't think I've ever seen K. Mike not convert one of those fourth and long, Scott. He's got ice in his veins in that situation. The pocket, the poise, and the touch on that pass right there, amazing. 26. Bunches it back up. There's some motion. And the delay, but Ooh. doesn't fool Big George. Let's take out this bomb again from Rodgers to Ojo. Watch this pocket presence. Steps up. Not a lot of players do that. And then throws a nice touch pass. It's going to be close, but Ocho has to step. When you have a positional advantage like that, your success chance at the catch goes way up, and Mike reap those benefits right there. There's the flats once again. This time to Ocho. And you got to be careful here. Yeah, he's got to call a timeout. You got three in your pocket, two left. Now only 12 seconds. Maybe a play, a play or two or three. Three if you're lucky. I think this is a two play situation. The important thing more than any of it, Scott, is that he comes away with points right here because he gets the ball at halftime to make it a one possession game, getting the ball back. You're in a position to take control of the game, and that's what he needs to do. He needs to come away with the points here. Empty backfield here on third and three. Quick throw, and so, he'll drop it, and maybe that's a good thing. He's going to kick the three. You have to take your three here, Mike. He's thinking about it. A little mental pretzel time for Mike. Oh, my. Up, and it is good. As you mentioned, he's going to get the ball on the other side of the half here. So take your three. Josh Kobe would be upset with us. <laughs> you get that three. You don't have to settle. You get three, you don't take it. And now we'll have one play here for George. And you've seen a lot of our competitors laying down on those kickoffs. They know disaster can happen when those guys with not as strong as a high carry rating go down there and get popped by a hit stick. Yeah, and especially with three seconds left. Well, Fournette, yeah, he's had a good first ball. half, and that's how our first half will come to a close. 10 to 3, George with the lead, but RG is about to kick off to that man on the near side of your screen, Mike. Well, when's he going to go back to Doug Zilla? That's the big question. Hey, that was his name. His name on the ladder is all is good, but he spells is with a Z <laughs> and uh, good with a U in it. If you do that backwards, it's Doug Zilla, which was his gamer tag all the way back in Madden 07 when I used to run into him on the online ladders. He's been around for a long time, Coltrane. A lot of experience from this young, young man killer.
spend a lot of cap to put that playmaker ability on the receivers. He has it on all three of these receivers in the bunch. And what I like about that is that's not a game plan that you're going to be able to practice or prepare with often because it's so unique to his style. And when I say playmaker receiver, what I mean is that's an ability on the receivers to when the play breaks down, you can move the right stick to change their direction quickly. And when you have that ability, they are very crisp and responsive to that command. Clean pocket. And it's Ocho Cinco once again to the 16. Going to pin on the spot here, and they're going to make it third and short. Inches to go here in the red zone. It's a big play right here for Mike. You, you got to assume maybe some QB sneak right here, a toss. You, you, you assume he's going to come out in that goal line formation, though. Third and inches on the goal line. You, you, just, you just need a little bit. A little bit of yards right now. You usually let the quarterback keep it. The problem is a guy with like Big George with 750 games under his belt, he may have some sneak D. And he's going to go the outside what here. It's going to be a work. touchdown for Mike. What stick work, Scott. You know your opponents keying in on the sneak or the toss. You go with a power O type of run. Run right where you're supposed to, in between the tackles. Get yourself seven. Look at this. Boom, boom. Textbook right there, Scott. Now we got ourselves a 10-10 ball game, and this is a battle. That's a gutsy call. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. They yeah. go to the outside. Takes so much time to set up that blocking. But it worked out. We got a tie ball game. Yeah, you're right. You don't see that often. The key is usually, like we said, the sneak or the toss. Mike's obviously practiced that before. It looked way too good, Scott. But again, it could have been a risky call had it not worked out. This might come down to who has the ball last. First opportunity of the second half for Big George. Michael Vick, the lefty, will let it fly. The man's wide open. That's Moss. Behind oh, the defense, the still has it. And pushed out of bounds at the 23-yard line. And I like what George did right there. Instead of going for the possession catch, because it looked like the ball was a little bit high, it might have went over his head, he goes for the aggressive catch right here. Look at that. Boom. Goes up, doesn't let the ball go over his head, breaks the tackle on his horse, back in field goal range. George continue to do work, continues to do work on offense. Well, he scored 10 unanswered to start the game. Mike's come back with 10 unanswered of his own. First and 10 for the 23 for Big George. And he'll hand it off oh, to Leonard Fournette, room. who's got room. He'll oh! run over a guy. Touchdown, Big George. Big George with the big truck. That was a grown man run, Scott, and doesn't only get himself in field goal range, turns it into seven in the red zone with that run. And he has Memphis, Tennessee going crazy right now. He said the entire city's going to be watching. Gee, I'm the problem of my city when it comes to Madden. His boy Godson has the watch party going on. They got to be going crazy in Memphis right now for the big fella. Well, it's going to be Mike's opportunity to answer here. Down, a touchdown. A 2.45 to go in the third. Ball to the 35-yard line. This is just semifinal number one. I told you, this is the reason we're always coming out here and doing the Seattle Seahawks Club Championship. Because it's going to be bananas. Well, I've seen how the Seahawks done business the last two years, Scott. Their events have always been amazing. And I said, when they said, RG, do you want to do any of the clubs coming up? I said, I would love the opportunity to do the Seahawks. I mean, any franchise where your, your 12th man, per se, sets the record for loudest crowd noise in a sporting event history, and you do it twice in one year, you got to pay homage to an organization like that. There's Jerry Rice, the GOAT. To the 41-yard line. Let's go, hey, let's go, come on. Boy, they're going to make this second in inches. Might as well call it an inch. I mean, they have marked that right on the yard again. Might see him take a shot here. If he doesn't hand it off to Coleman, we might see him take a shot. Two deep safeties, scrambling. There's a playmaker. Has him along the sideline. Has him along the sideline and just couldn't set his feet. And I love what George did right there, Scott. He had someone manned up on the wide receiver coming for the far left. So when Mike tried to play maker him up in that sweet spot of the field, the man defender stayed with him. Man coverage is the key to stopping playmakers. If everyone just wants to sit into zone, those guys are going to be able to find holes. That was a beautiful adjustment by Big George right there. Boy, tons of cushion in the cover, too. Ends up checking it down. There's that playmaker ability. 
as he playmakers Ocho Cinco to the outside. You can see him throw that hand up, change direction, and picks up the first down. Yeah, Mike's walking up the field right now. George is going to have to make a play on defense. Mike looking mighty comfortable. Jabril Peppers on the tackle. That's a new set of downs here for Mike. Rodgers looking to the end zone. Oh! And he'll fall harmlessly to the turf. Great job getting over there with the user late. Missed read by Mike. If you, if you see the replay come up, he had a guy coming wide open over the cross of the middle, across the middle, just missed him, went for the gusto. Had about a 15, 20 yard gain though, right over the middle that he missed out on. Well, he had beat the free safety. There it is again. But he didn't see Rod Woodson who made the play and now it's Randy Moss. There's another playmaker, he's in the red zone. That's two plays in a row though, Scott. He, he's missed the guy running Jones, for Jones. big yardage what, right over that middle on that deep cross hey, route. Hold, hold, hold. See how much cushion George has in this cover too. And almost oh. picked off. That is a tight window you know, to Golden Tate. They say as you get older, your stick work isn't as good, but George at 28 years old, he's clicking on and trying to make these interceptions, and his reaction time on these click-ons is extremely fast and extremely impressive right now, Scott. Less than a minute left in the third. Second and eight now. Mike trailing by seven with the ball. Here's the motion, and they're gonna run it! Wow. Boy, they brought Tate over to try to pick up that blitzing linebacker. But he didn't get the block. Jones comes through. But J Jones is tough. Real oh, tough. Oh, he is on a lot of the salary cap team, Scott. He is a very fast middle linebacker that can make a ton of plays. He's low cap, he has some hit power. You'll see him on a lot of lineups. Third and 11, we are in salary cap mode. Represent the Seattle Seahawks here. Who's gonna move on to the final? Will it be Big George or Mike? Kevin Decroft coming up next. Rogers trying to extend the play. Oh, missed the dive tackle. And Moss! comes up with a touchdown. Oh, user error there for George. Game of inches, Scott. Boy, Vic Beasley, RG, had him dead to rights. Take a look at it. You're gonna see George click on and try to make a play oh, and just goodness. messes the dive and then goes to strip and messes that up. I'm paying homage about his stick work. And that was a debacle right there by George as the play broke down. But for Mike, that was huge to buy time, stay poised, get a high ball to Moss, give him a chance to make a play in the red zone just like he did for George. And this is just an even back and forth matchup, Scott. I told you at halftime, it might be about who has it. Last, both our competitors well over 200 yards now. Gosh, it's good to be back. First and 10 at the 25. Well, we got a full load of games next week, RG. We're going to be up at the brand new EA Studios, the home of Madden out in San Francisco there at Redwood at the headquarters. Oh, I love it. Seven, I'm juiced. I'm juiced for that. When you have a $700,000 prize pool, there's going to be eight people at least that are going to be $20,000 richer. We're going to have a new club champion, every NFL's team representative. It's what it's all about, Scott. It's what I live for. Well, I think that's worth noting here on the final play of the third. As Vic is looking, he's going to, oh boy, overthrow there as he's using his legs. And that'll put us in the fourth quarter. Put your fours up. But what I was saying is, Killer Mike won this two years ago and took home 20 grand as the winner. This year's winner will take home 100 grand. You mentioned you finished eighth. You're taking home more than Killer Mike took home two years ago. Two years ago. And the reason for that being, Scott, is this year the club championship event has the highest payout structure of all MCS events this year, which puts the extra pressure on players in this event. Talking with Kiv, he said that same exact thing. He said, gee, I won the 100000 last year, but it wasn't in this event. This year, this event is so important. There's a lot of pressure. It's bigger than ever. And this is the one you got to come out and show out in. It's, well, where, it's where the majority of the money is. And, and you ask why. Well, first of all, you have 128 players, right? We start with 100. We, we start with well more than that, but 128 players make it to each of the 32 teams. That's four times 32. Either and I could do that math. Boom. But Kiv is saying, hey, you got to win nine single elimination games in a row to take home the 100 grand. Against, that's going to be uh, wild next week. I can't win nine 
games in a row against random Joe Schmoes <laughs> online, might as well elite level competitions. So I, I can lose nine in a row. I'm pretty good at that. This is a hard event to win, Scott. It's going to be very well deserved for whoever secures that bag. Second and one. Everyone Opening seconds here, the fourth. Mike with an opportunity to drive down and take the lead. It'll be his first lead of the game. He started out down 10 to nothing, but able to answer it back before the half, and now we're tied at 17. Yeah, George really didn't able to get anything going on that last drive, and for the first time all game, like you said, K. Mike has the ball with an, a, the chance to take the lead. And these are the situations we've seen him clutch up in time and time again. If you're George, you really got to bring your best defensive stand you got on this possession. Looking. Oh, he's Rogers. got him. He's got him. Wide, Wide open. open one handed grab for Ocho Cinco. He's got Jerry Rice, Randy Moss, and Ocho Cinco as his three wide receivers in this bunch of 11 personnel, Scott. If you give him time like this, eventually those guys are going to get open, especially with those playmakers. Mike with a surgical read right there and gets the lead for the first time in this ball game. And now George is really going to have to ask himself, is he willing to step up and prove that he can hang with the best? because it comes down to this drive for him right now. This is, it isn't all on this drive, Scott, but this is a big one for him. And I love the late, great Sean Taylor, and I think he may be one of the best free safeties of all time, but he got turned around on that last play and well behind the post route of Ocho Cinco. Here's Amari Cooper. who went from the, the Raiders to, to the Cowboys, and boy, did that re-spark re his season oh and his career. Goodness. So, George is staying in this bunch, Scott. He really likes this formation. He had two guys open, but he missed it. Nine, Look, nine of 14 there now for Vic. I was going to say, Scott, it looked like he, the streak on the right side of the screen had a step on his receiver. It's easy for me to hear to play couch coach in the back. where It's much harder to make those reads when you're on the sticks. But it looks like a, another missed opportunity for the big guy. Oh, he sent the house. Fournette. This reminds me, this team that George has set up as he goes to a hurry up here on third and two. And I, you know how I feel about the hurry up. Usually never works out, but I think he saw something he liked. And Tyreek will get the first down. What I was going to say, obviously we're playing salary cap mode and you get a, you build your own team. This reminds me of some of those championship Seahawk teams where you got you got a fast guy just like Russell Wilson and Michael Vick you got a big time running back in Fournette that reminds me of beast mode and yep. then you're just you're working the underneath routes like you know to Tyree Hill much like they did with Doug Baldwin that was a key to success and I think that big George is using that too to his advantage here but he's trailing by a touchdown the pocket oh not enough and how about Mike Scott there's Shaquem Griffin. Yeah, there you go. There you go, a little Seattle Seahawks love right there. But how about Mike rocking a little 4-3 defense? We're so used to guys running the nickel and the dollars. Mike comes out with his own flavor in this 4-3 scheme and has himself back into the game. And I love when you see players do that. Throw something at your opponent that's outside of the meta that they may not expect, and that's what we're seeing Mike do right now. Second and 16. Sending them. Gets it out to Amari. And that'll get half of it back to the 37-yard line. Field goal cannot be in your mind here. This is four-down situation. You're going down here with an opportunity to maybe force overtime. Yeah, he's got three timeouts, but that clock is against him. We're about to hit the two-minute warning here in the fourth quarter. I'm not sure I don't hit the two-minute warning here. I think he's going to snap. Gets it off just before. Playmaker. Vic will Miss. go to his natural left, and he'll just throw it away, and there's the two-minute warning. That was a good throw away right there by George. He didn't want to force anything, but now he gets. But why not hit? I mean, maybe he saw something he liked here, but, hey, use that two-minute warning because now you're down to maybe your last opportunity here, fourth and five, hey, let's go. here from the 37-yard line. Well, that's why he wanted to snap the ball real quick before that two-minute to get the playoff, but he gets himself in this predicament right here, Scott, fourth and five. This is a huge play. 
Bunch to the left. He's got Tyree Kill in at tight end. Hasn't used him a lot from that formation. Let's see what he does here. Hill coming across. He's looking. And that's who he'll wow. find on a little playmaker. Oh, my goodness. What a huge play on fourth and five for Big George. That was risky. Oh, my goodness. He needed it so bad right there, and he got it. And you saw on that playmaker, it took Hill a little longer to cut up that field. That's because he doesn't have that playmaker ability that lets him react to that command immediately. To the flat. This is what's worked for him. Impressive drive. Sean Taylor coming up, making the play. But, you know, what he's hoping is just for one big play out of that, one missed tackle, or can he use his speed to get to the outside? Hasn't happened yet, but it's been a great play, gaining him a, an average of 12 yards. I'll tell you, the, the way George is running this tight slots. Vic has a man wide open. Do, do you see what he's doing, Scott? He's coming out in the tight slots all game, and then they'll audible to bunch, bunch tight end, and it's allowing them to get a wide receiver in that tight end position. And that's just gonna be very hard for the defense to deal with. That's not something you deal with every day, and that's a very unique scheme and way to run bunch, bunch that we're seeing from Big George. That's phenomenal lab work by him. Mike uses a timeout here. He's feeling that he's gonna- Oh, he's got Stanley double height! Oh, no! Oh no, it's just like the Super Bowl, Scott, on the one or two yard line, they go to pass and start giving it to Leonard Fournette, who's been trucking people like Beast Mode all game long. It's deja vu. I gotta see this again, you're right. It's he, the double A. It's the double A, Scott. He accidentally meant to do some sort of adjustment using the A button, but then he snapped it and pressed A again right away. If you're a Madden player, you've done that before, and you know that it stinks, but that, oh, that is rough for Big George. Second and 10 here, George uses his first time out. I mean, if you can force a punt back here. You're still in it, this isn't over. It's going to come down to this right here, Scott. Third and six. This will determine if he's going to get the ball back or if Mike's going to advance to his third championship game in a row in the Seattle Seahawks Club Championship event. Here it is. Third and six. He's going to go to the air. Rodgers looking downfield. It's clutch. How clutch is Doug Zilla? Doug Zilla, a.k.a. Mike, <laughs> Mike a.k.a. All is good, a.k.a. 19-0 and 0 in club championship games, a.k.a. the two-time Seahawks champion in his third club championship game. I am just so impressed by young K. Mike. But we got to say hats off to Big George, too, Scott. Oh, he fought. He fought hard. He came in. He has no reason to hang his head down. I mean, it was one mistake that really cost him right there at the end. Well, victory formation, and that's what it'll be. For Mike, you mentioned Look. all smiles for him. Look at them. Those are two classy guys right there. George is classy as it gets. He, he was one of my favorite interviews I got to talk to. He was a great guy, phenomenal competitor. He really enjoys competing in Madden. He really enjoys playing the game. And we'll see him continuing to come back and do his thing. But for this game right now, it's all about K-Mike going to his third championship game in a row, Scott. Well, Mike has done his part. The question is, will Kiv be able to do his part on the other side?